the Lich King. Probably one of my favorite characters, maybe one of the more tragic characters from the Warcraft lore. Arthas Menethil becomes the Lich King and leads the Scourge, or the Undead, really. And in this video today, we're going to be creating both that faction and that hero, going predominantly through these Shadow Affinity Tomes, with a little sprinkling here into Chaos. So, hang tight, we're going to jump through this here. As always, though, guys, I do say that these are pretty much just a guide, a, a general recommendation of, of tomes and things that you can do. If you have any other ways you want to approach this, by all means, go ahead and do it. This is not a set in stone min max way to approach the game. And as I always say too, do not approach Age of Wonders with a min max mindset. Approach it with an RP mindset to get the most bang for your book. But as always, guys, uh, if you want to, you can just jump to any point of the video that interests you the most using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And if you've not yet picked up Age of Wonders 4, you can do so using the Nexus link in my description and pinned comment. That way you can help support me and my small tiny dog named Roman. But let's get started here on how to create the Lich King in Age of Wonders 4. So to start things off with our physical form, we have the humans. Now, I'm of course going with the Scourge. Now, I, I, let's also make the distinction too that I understand that Arthas Menethil, the Lich King, does not lead the faction of undead that you play in World of Warcraft. At that time, they had split off. They're different. I get that. I'm just going to be using a lot of nomenclature to make things easier for the video. So if you are a big World of Warcraft, or Warcraft for that matter, lore fanatic, and I do mess those things up, I guarantee you it's just me trying to make things easy for people to understand that maybe don't understand it. So for our body trait, we have a lot of options. Um, fast recuperation is kind of cool to kind of get that regenerative uh, capability of, of the undead. Uh, strong and tough are kind of nifty. And quick reflexes is one I actually really like because it's 30% harder to hit by ranged attacks. It kind of gets you this, this scurrying, scampering little horde. But I'm actually going to go with nightmare mounts. And it's the m only mount choice that I actually think is not great compared to the other four. I think this is the least powerful one. But I think that the Nightmare Mounts look somewhat similar to the mounts that you get playing as either a Death Knight, which of course is an undead horse with glowy blue action and, and smoke coming out of it, and as you're, if you're playing as the undead, right? So we're going to go with the Nightmare Mounts just because it's fun and thematic. Uh, again, you can choose whatever you want. And then Overwhelm Tactics because we're going to go very Horde oriented in this, in this uh, build. Now this of course changes our mounts here, and we're going to go feudal, so it doesn't add any mounts to us like it would if you were, say, playing as high. It puts your tier 3 unit on a mount. Same thing with like Industrious, your Barbarian. Well, I'm sorry, Barbarian doesn't get any, any additional benefits, but still. The fact remains. Now on to our society traits. We're going to go Scions of Evil, because we're going to be going heavy into... Um, producing a lot of units. So cities gain 10 draft and your empire gains 5 imperium per level of evil alignment. So this really is nice for you and you also get additional shock and shield units. It's pretty much just talking about the defender which is actually a really, really, really strong unit. You could go powerful evokers instead if you want to lean more into battle mage units and support units but you don't really get those default if you're playing feudal even though your support mage is actually quite good. Quite, quite, quite good. Now secondary, of course, we're going to go with Ritual Cannibals, just so we get the ability to consume corpses. It's just too on brand. It is too on point. Now for our Tome selection, we're going to be going Cryomancy second. Um, but you can start with it right now because we're just going to want to overload that, that image of frost damage and frost everything, right? Even the White Witch is a really good one, because if you went with uh, Powerful Evokers, this is a great way to get your Battle Mage unit in the game very quickly. But the reason I like to go Tome of Souls first is because this gives you something like, I don't know, maybe 8 to 10 turns, however long it takes you to get to your second Tome. It allows you to get your Souls economy online faster. And any of the early damage and armies that you kill allow you to solidify Souls quicker to then, like I said, push that Souls economy faster. Yeah, Souls Economy, if, if you really aren't on top of it, you'll find that you're like, man, I'm always having a drop for Souls. So we want to focus on that now. Your third option you can start with is the Tome of the Horde because we want to get Spawn Kin. Pretty much nothing else in this matters except for Spawn Kin. Uh, actually, Fury of the Horde. Ooh, Blaze of the Horde and Fury of the Horde. Those are the three that we're going to get from the uh, Tome of the Horde in a, in a bit. So we're going to go Tome of the Souls and select that. And we're going to go Wizard King. The big reason we're choosing Wizard King more than anything is because if you go with a Wizard King, you can uh, not choose 
to apply major race transformations to your ruler. And that is crucial because when we go white born through the Tome of Souls, we're going to make it so that we do not apply it to Arthas Menethil. And for our sword, we're going to go Tyrant Sword and Shield, which you can unlock through your Pantheon system. The Gaudier Sword and Shield is just fine if you want. But this at least gives us even more Intimidation Aura. And then the Feudal Longsword is right here. It does 10 damage, I think, versus this one, which only does... Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to go with this. I like Vigor. Vigor is quite nice. Um, Intimidation Order is, is cool and all, but this looks a little bit more on uh, on point for Arthas. So our Physique, we're going to go right here. Legs right here and here. Uh, oh, hulking. Now, unfortunately, we'll change all this. We, we can't get like a frosty blue, you know, like... When you see Arthas and all the uh, all the artwork, he's got that real frost blue because he's just completely like gone over to the dark side more or less. So we're going to go with something like that. Go the pose, which is kind of generic right now. And you have to move that helmet, and we're going to go with a head like this one and eye color. Now we don't, of course, have any kind of cool glowing blue, unfortunately. So we have to kind of make do with our glowing purple eyes. And we're going to do a navy blue here with a light blue followed by this helmet, which is like pretty much exactly the helmet that we get for uh, the actual banner in the game. Hell, this skin just does not do it for me. I want, I just want that frosty blue. Just can't get it. Well, it'll do. It'll do, pig. It'll do for our purposes. Um, hairstyle won't matter. Beard style, we're going to get rid of, of course. Outfit. It's just the generic one that we almost always do when we're doing an evil character. Armor color, like this nice kind of like dark, uh, like gunmetal gray. And for our cape, you're going to want to go through the Pantheon system and get this, uh, which I believe is the art uh, artisan's cape versus these. This is like your the warrior's cape. The artisan's cape's in that same line. It's right there. I think it works, fits really well with the helmet we're going to go with, which is not exactly the Lich King's helmet, but it's pretty damn close. So there we go. We're all set with our Arthas. Let's go ahead and do the race itself. Let me check all these sliders real quick. Yeah, we're good to go. I want these guys to be small, itty little bitty, because if we're using spawn kin on them, we, you know, we want these guys to look like the just dejected remnants of the undead and scourge. We want them to look just absolutely terrible. We'll go through super pale white. Armor color again, it's all beaten up looking, something like this. And this is going to fit probably the best what we have in mind here. Because, when, again, we're going to go whiteborn and spawnkin, so these guys are going to change entirely. They're going to be very small and decrepit looking, and they're going to just be whites. So I want that all the way down on physique, arm length, and, and uh, leg length. You can bring those up if you so wish. It is entirely up to you. Then after that, we're going to go change this to Lich King. Uh-uh-uh. There we go. Arthas, Menethil, and the Scourge. And there we go. You just simply press onward and you are good to go. So let's take a look at how we're going to break down the tomes for Arthas. Load into the map here. I've actually gone with the Frost Realm that you unlock through the Pantheon system too. Which I was going to say, you can go with Frost Adaptation as your mind trait if you don't want to do Overwhelm Tactics. Which is very gamey right now. A lot of people... A strong and overwhelmed tactics is kind of like the meta pick for the absolute quote unquote best types of factions. But if you don't want to do overwhelmed tactics, you've done it a bunch of times. Frost adaptation is another really good shout here. Um, I just, adaptations oftentimes kind of shoehorn you into a specific style of play that if the map doesn't have it, like say for example, Seafarers or something like that, and you can't take full advantage of it. So I wanted to kind of make that distinction up front. But okay, tome time, tome time in the USA. So our first tome is, of course, the Tome of Souls. Then after that, we're going to be going into the Tome of Cryomancy. Again, we're just trying to lean into that frost damage and frozen aspect of it. And this is, of course, why frost adaptation can be really cool once we start to get into stuff like some of the latter tomes, like the Cold Dark and so on and so forth. But we'll get there in just a little bit. Now, usually, I would say your third tome should just be a Tier 2 tome. But... I'm going to say your third tome is the Tome of the Horde, and you're only splashing into this once. You're just doing it to get the Spawn Kin Camp, or Spawn Kin, Fury of the Horde, all friendly Tier 1 units become strengthened. Now, this does mean your Peasants, which will advance into Defenders because you're playing as Feudal. So keep those things in mind. Uh, defenders are quite good. Peasants are not so impressive. But with Spawn Kin, you're at least make, giving them, make them do, you're at least allowing them to do 20% extra damage. And here's why this is really cool. Because you're doing 20% extra damage. 
you also now have the, the ability to just suck at pointing this out. Um, 20% more damage. Overwhelm Tactics is going to give you 10% crit hit. Stand Together, which is an innate feudal ability, is going to give you an additional 20% damage when you're around your other bros. So this allows you to really pour on 40% extra damage just by standing next to people with Stand Together and Spawn Kin activated. It's a very good wombo combo there. So going back into this too, uh, another big thing I wanted to point out with that Chaos Affinity um, is Fury of the Horde, all from the tier 1s become strengthened. So now they're going to do 50% damage, right? Because you're increasing that even further. Your Bannerman can also strengthen. It's, it's, it's a lot of really cool value you can get from this. Then the other really big focus in Tome of the Horde is Blaze of the Horde. So 3 damage for each of your friendly tier 1 units on the battlefield. And then 2 damage for each friendly non-tier 1 unit. So really you're losing one damage point for any of your other units on the damage field and then on down the battlefield. Um, and then any damage you do is done in a one hex radius, mostly done towards the center point. Then everything else outside of that, that's 50% of that damage. So you can actually ramp this up really impressively. If you want to get another ability in Tome of the Horde, Tome, or, uh, Summon Regulars is really good because you're basically just going to be summoning up a bunch of tier one peasants. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool to get, get these things all kind of going in conjunction. Where we're pretty much now going to stick almost exclusively with Shadow Affinity. Um, the Tome of the Doom Herald is a cool one here. It's going to give you cruel weaponry. Uh, summon Banshee, which is pretty the pretty much the biggest one we want to get on this one. Joy Siphoners is a nice little minor race transformation. It's really a lot of morale focus, which is nice for your peasants, which do actually have poor morale. Um, but Tome of Necromancy is going to be your big one. Which you'll probably want to get as your first Tier 2 Tome to, again, solidify more Souls Generation. The big reason is you get Soul Well, which is now going to give you both mana and souls and accounts as a research outpost. And you just need to put it next to um, adjacent, I'm sorry, I had a, had a breathe there, adjacent research posts or conduits to get even more mana, which is just really, really nice. It's just a good way to get guaranteed three souls every turn. You put one of these in every single one of your cities. So you want to make sure you're making outposts to generate another city and staying at your cap and getting Soul Wells up as much as you can. Rotting Explosion to turn thing to blow up zombies. Necromancer to summon zombies. Now, what are zombies? I'm going to show you right now. They are tier one units. Uh-oh, we're going to make those things burly jacked monsters. So you remember, you're going to be really focusing on this. And these tier one units come out as tier one feudal zombies. So you're really getting a lot of benefit out of this. The Cold Dark is going to be really cool here because we're going to get stuff like Marching Winter. Target Friendly City starts altering terrain to Arctic at two provinces. So you're focusing on this really cool Arctic approach that you're taking. Um, in fact, maybe I want to amend what I'm saying. Uh, maybe the mind trait is that you go uh, Arctic Adaptation. But Overwhelm Tactics is just so good with the stacking benefits of what you can do here. So you have a lot of fun here. Flash Freeze is a terraforming spell to turn... Uh, set region to arctic terrain uh, it's mainly used against the enemy because enemies sustain 10 damage enemies have two percent or minus two for, uh, status resistance for one world map turn so you have a lot of fun here just kind of changing how things go and then you have frosting transformation which is really important for you more than anything because it gives you that 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 frost bitten blue skin that arthas has so you want this definitely get this one then we go to Great Transformation here, even more into depth in, with the uh, Undead Shtick, uh, Whiteborn. And then when you do this, when you select Whiteborn, you're going to see a checkbox at the top right corner. I can show you this really quickly. Um, do not, make sure you check that box, make sure it's not checked. Because if it's checked, then your hero will become Whiteborn. If it's unchecked, then your hero will not become Whiteborn. So you won't be undead, unfortunately, right? But you don't turn into a white, which is important because you maintain the look of Arthas Menethil. Tome of Oblivion, probably my least favorite tier 4 to tome as far as like this overall theme goes. It hinges itself very much on insanity. Um, and unfortunately, because it is a tier 4 tome, you have to have 6 affinity. So I can't tell you to splash into another tier 4 tome unless you've built up enough affinity to do so. So if you have 6 affinity in another direction and you've kind of not followed this guide 100%, then splash into something else because I do not really like the Tome of Oblivion because Insanity is very hard to um, uh, predict. 
Then Tome of the Reaper here, really starting to pop things off. Greater reanimation, the Reaper itself, and then Tome of the Eternal Lord to become the true Lich King. Summoning up undead armies, true death magic, battlefield reanimation, all sorts of great things to truly become, again, the Lich King. So that concludes our video here on making Arthas Menethil, making the Lich King from Warcraft in Age of Wonders 4. Now, as I always say, guys, you can do this so many different ways, right? If you want to not go through the whole Spawnkin route, you can go a whole different route. You can mix Shadow with Order to get a really kind of cool, orderly, sh uh, undead army. Whatever it is that makes the most sense to you for your construction of this, please, by all means, go ahead and do it. This is, as I've mentioned before, just a blueprint, just a guide to get you from one point to the other. If you have any suggestions of other characters you'd like to see, I think this is probably the most uh, most requested one up to this point. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.